This is Scott from SimpleSpider.com. Uh, today will be the tutorial will be on installing WordPress on Oracle Linux 7. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward process. The first thing I want to do is I want to uh, make sure I have a uh, Oracle Linux 7 uh, minimal install server available. If you haven't done this already, or if you're just doing this, this is the first step you want to go ahead and do and make sure you build your instance out. Uh, if you want, go onto my website, you can see some tutorials about building a base one and then cloning it using VirtualBox. Or if you're using physical hardware, you can also build your instance that way. But I have a server set up. Uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to start installing it. I'm going to do this all from the command line. Uh, I don't have any need to go get a graphical interface. Uh, the tools I'm using here are Secure CRT. I like it a little bit better than Putty. Um, but Putty will work the same way, so if you're using a free version of Putty, uh, that's also a way to connect to your server and work with it. So I've already got the server set up, I've already got DNS set up, so my server, I can talk to my server and I can talk to my machine that I'm controlling the server by. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and start installing the software. The first software I'm going to install is I'm going to install the actual uh, web server, and I'm going to use yum to do this. I'm going to use yum install, and I'm going to install mod SSL. Open SSL and HTTP, which is Apache. And I'm going to go ahead and send it right away. When I send that in, I'm going to go ahead and send it the yes command to tell it yes, I want to go ahead and install. And this will take a few seconds for it to pull down and install that software for me. This will be the web server that WordPress uses um, in our instance here. Alright, now that that's complete, that I've got my web server installed, I'm going to go ahead and install um, PHP. And PHP MySQL. This is the software code that WordPress uses. And same thing here when I do my installation, I'm going to yum install PHP, PHP MySQL. And I'm going to go ahead and send in the yes flag to tell it yes instantly. Uh, do the install that it doesn't have to ask me if I know that this install is good. Alright, now before I can install my MySQL, uh, because I'm using Oracle Linux, I'm going to go into the repository, the YUM repository, and configure the YUM repository to allow me to download MySQL. Um, I'm going to vi into etsy slash yum dot repos dot d slash public, and here you can see as I tab over I can see public dash yum oel7 repo and I'm going to edit this re repository file. You can see here that I already have the latest version and the ba uh, the latest version in enabled here with the one flag in the yum repository. Uh, that allows me to enable the software, but I'm going to slide down here all the way down to MySQL. And here I'm going to enable the repository for MySQL 5.6. And I'm going to do that by uh, uh, using in a, marking it 1 in the enabled flag. I go ahead and hit escape, close out of this, and now I'll be able to go ahead and use that to install my uh, MySQL because now that repository will be available. So I'll say yum install MySQL dash server and also send it in the yes flag. I could do these all at once if I wanted to set this all in one command and do it at once but I'm kind of breaking it down so we know what tools I'm installing and why I'm in, what the purpose of the tools are that I am installing So the next thing I'm actually going to install is going to be an FTP server, a uh, secure FTP server, so that if I do want to upload files to my WordPress server that I can, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that with uh, the VSFTP software. Yeah, I'm install VSFTPD, uh, and yes again. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and install a couple more tools that's just this is just to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, actually, the the install tool, I, the unzip tool, I actually need. 
to unzip the software once I download it but I'm going to go ahead and install unzip for unzipping my tools mlocate that's just a database to uh, that indexes files on your system so it's a little bit faster to do searches on your system and I'm going to install wget that's a piece of software that allows me to uh, do uh, downloads uh, directly onto my server here so I'm going to install all three of those pieces of software and say yes alright the next thing I'm going to install is I'm going to install some PHP libraries these libraries are really for add-ons uh, so I'm going to install PHP GD and PHP XML and I'm going to go ahead and say yes so the graphics and the XML software allows me to use some extra features inside of PHP alright so now that I've got my software install I'm just gonna go ahead and start up my SQL instance my database instance or actually my database software and then I'll create a database instance so to do that I'm gonna do uh, system CTL start my SQL D that's gonna start my uh, my SQL instance up I'm also gonna enable this so that when I restart my Linux server it comes up automatically so you don't really have to do that but if you don't do that if you don't make that configuration step then uh, when you reboot the server it will be offline and you'll have to actually restart it using the start command I'm gonna do the same thing with my web server so I'm gonna do systemctl start and I'm gonna say HTTPD and I'm gonna do the same thing for enabling it so that it automatically restarts if I reboot the server probably not going to reboot the server a whole lot of times but you will need on occasion to reboot the server when um, you're doing patching so now I'm going to secure up my SQL instance when I get it by base it has an, it doesn't have a password on there's some things that um, I don't want the server to be configured with so I'm going to go ahead and run this command and my command is uh, mysql underscore secure installation and it's going to ask me a couple questions. Do I want to set my root password? Um, do, or actually, it first asked me, what is my current root password? And of course, because I haven't done anything for setting my password, there is no password yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter for none. And then it asked me, do I want to set that password? And I absolutely do. I'm going to say yes here. And I'm going to actually be setting uh, a weak password here only because I'm using this for a test case I'm not uh, normally even in my test cases I would build this but as on my demo here I want you to be to see my password um, when I type it in so uh, I'm using password one as my password uh, normally that would not be the case it says do I want to remove anonymous user access and absolutely I want to remove out anonymous user access it also asks me if I want to remove the remote login for root and that's true also uh, remove the test ba database there's no need for that especially if I'm you know, building this for a production server and I'm gonna flush and rebuild my privilege table now so that the accesses that I've done the changes immediately take effect and I'm gonna go ahead and say yes so once that's done I'll be kicked out of the the software it'll complete what its steps are and I'm gonna go ahead and um, sign into my instance and create my database so now it's gonna ask me for the password I've just created and again I've set it this to password one and I'm gonna go ahead and create that again for your root password you really don't want to set that I'm just doing that so that you have a password set so the couple steps I need to do is I need to create a database so once I'm signed in actually the first step I'll do is I'll just say we'll, we'll do a show database here we'll see that the, the databases I have are my information schema, my SQL, and my performance schema. So I don't have any databases created yet for access for my WordPress. So I'm going to go ahead and do, run the create database command. And I'm going to call it uh, simple spider prod uh, and as my WordPress database. And I'm going to go ahead and say create that database for me. So it creates that database. And then I'm going to say I'm going to create a user and give him all privileges to that database so he can go in there and modify uh, anything he needs to modify at this time so I'm gonna go ahead and go all privileges on 
my new database name. Dot star, so everything that's in that database. Two, and I'm going to create this account as WordPress and from localhost. Uh, if I was coming from a separate server, I would have to add the server or the IP that I'm coming from. So WordPress is going to be my username. Localhost is what server it's coming from. And I'm going to go ahead and grant all privileges to this new user account. I'm going to hit enter and I can see that it says OK. I'm going to go ahead and immediately set a password for that account. So I write set password for WordPress at localhost. And I'm going to set that password also to password1. Now let's do it like this. And again, the same thing with this. I'm not going to want this to be a, a easily uh, hackable password. So I would normally set this to a uh, harder password than that and I'm going to reset the privileges so that they reload or reload the privileges right away by hitting the flush privileges command and now I can exit this uh, portion of the setup I'm going to go ahead and um, go to my uh, web directory which is going to be var www html and I could go in there and modify my where my directory is at and list that directory. I see that there's nothing there currently. I could go ahead and modify that directory for the but for this install, I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, go right to the directory, the default directory. Uh, if you're having multiple instances, you might want to build out different directories for your instances. But in my case, I've just got one WordPress instance that I've built here, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. Um, so at my var www.html I'm going to go ahead and pull down the software. I'm going to use the w, wgit command I'm going to use and go to the WordPress site. Uh, WordPress has made this pretty easy for me to download. They've uh, put the latest version in a latest zip so I don't have to know the version number. I can just go ahead and pull down the latest. So I'm going to run wgit https WordPress org latest zip and that's going to go ahead and pull down the current version of WordPress. From here, I'm going to see in my directory I have the latest version. I'm going to go ahead and unzip the latest version, latest zip here. And that was where we came in with that unzip command. And we'll see here that I have a WordPress directory built out here now with my software in it. I'm going to go ahead and take all the software in this directory and I'm going to move it into my root directory. Again, you don't need to do this. You could change this in your configuration files to point to your root directory or you may not want WordPress actually installed in your root directory. You may want it under a subdirectory. In my case, I'm doing an example where I am putting in the root directory. So the www directory of this website is where I'm putting this at, not slash WordPress or slash blog or slash uh, website. So in this case, I want it in the main directory. So I'm going to go ahead and cd back here to my uh, my HTML directory, and I'm going to go ahead and say cp WordPress star to var www.html minus r recursive. That's going to be a recursive copy, and now we'll see that I have all my software here. And I'm going to go ahead and move, remove that WordPress directory that I just made here a second ago, and I'm going to uh, remove it recursively. R and F are going to give me that recursive and that force WordPress uh, removal. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. I'm also going to go ahead and remove my uh, latest file. I don't need that anymore in my root directory. So I have my, my directory cleaned up. Now, it's a good idea to go ahead and back up those files. Uh, someplace else in case you do need to make modifications or you rebuild this somewhere else and you need to get back and see what they were in that current version uh, that you don't have to go back to WordPress but you can find older versions of WordPress on the WordPress site uh, but it's just a good idea for you to back them up on your own site alright so now that I'm here I'm gonna go ahead and modify my WordPress configuration file which is 
I'm going to take and make and build a WordPress configuration file from the sample file. So I'm just going to make a copy of wp-configs-sample to wp-config-php uh, and hit enter. Then I'm going to edit that configuration file and it's already pretty well laid out for me unless I have some special features that I'm looking for. So I'm going to edit this file and there are a couple things that I've got to set up here. I'm going to set up my database settings here. Uh, it asks me first for my database name. Or I should say it doesn't ask me. I have to find the database name uh, parameter. And I'm going to go ahead and set that to the database name that I made. Then it asks me for the, data, the database username that I've created. And this is going to be WordPress. And here's where I set that uh, WordPress account password run. This is not my root password. This is going to be my WordPress password that I created a little while ago that I set to WordPress one. And it says it's already configured for localhost. Again, if you need to go from somewhere else, you'll need to configure that uh, to the right server the, from the other server to this server. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. I don't need to do any more configurations of this file at this time. And in my case, for simplicity, I'm just going to disable the firewall. Uh, in most cases, you'll just put in rules for the firewall to allow it only to have access to that, but that's not really what this tutorial is about, so I'm not going to go ahead and explain, go through that right now. And since it's just a test, uh, I'm going to make it a little bit quicker. I'm going to go ahead and just disable my firewall so I can have access to it. I'm also going to, uh, I stopped it, I'm also going to disable it so it doesn't start up. Uh, this would be better if I put in some rules to only have access to that 80 and 443 port, but for now that's all I'm going to do with it. And I'm going to disable. Alright, so now the next steps that I have, now that I have the server set up, is I'm going to go ahead and start up a browser and actually go ahead and uh, go to that website. And you'll see that it pops up with a window that says, hey, uh, your installation has started. Would you like to finish it up here? And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter some configurations here to get my WordPress uh, installation completed to do the database portion of it and the pieces like that. Uh, it asks me what I, what I want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and call it WordPress Simple Spider. But again, name yours appropriately for your site. I'm going to go ahead and create an admin account. Um, it's not necessary to call this admin. Um, it's probably even better if you don't call it admin so that somebody who does try to access your uh, website doesn't even have a guess at what the username is. And then I'm going to set a uh, password. Uh, in this case, I'm going to set a strong password. Uh, I don't need to show you anywhere where my password is, so I'm going to go ahead right away and set a strong password in my password configuration. Now ask me for my email address for configurations and I'm going to go ahead and say uh, my email address um, and it says allow search engines to index this site that's tr truly what I want and I'm going to go ahead and install WordPress we'll see here right away that it take it completes and it takes me to a login screen so I'm going to put in that admin username and password so I can see that when my WordPress site is ready to go. Alright, here you can see that I'm, I've come to my dashboard where I can start editing files. I could also go directly to the WordPress site now that it's completed. And I'll see that it has a base configuration already set up for me. Alright, so that's all we need to do to get the uh, WordPress site set up. So, thanks for watching this tutorial. Thanks, bye.